We have said before on this show that power is very critical for production. But beyond this show, it's a common fact that is known for all those that are business savvy. Well, it's for this reason that government invested heavily in power generation. So much so that today we can say that we are power sufficient. In other words, we're producing enough power to meet the demand for it. Well, you could talk about penetration of this, but that's another discussion altogether. Today, however, there are still a few challenges that are making it hard for those on the national grid to make the best of that. And that's what we're exploring. The amount of power or electricity generated by Uganda has been steadily increasing over the past 10 years. This is being supported by the harnessing of several energy alternative sources driven mainly by improved technology and availability of investable funds in the energy sector. Largely you have the 68% of the large hydropower plants, the new entrants, the solar PV at 2%, grid connected. We have cogeneration and this is generation from the sugar industry, from the sugar waste, bagas at 11%. And we have our cherished standby power plants that we call upon under emergencies. That is the thermal power plant. Overall, besides the big public power generators like Bujaga and Owen Falls, the country today has many private entities that have joined this sector. From the one UEGCL that we inherited from UEB, now we have 22 generation companies operating. We have nine distribution companies. This has in effect increased power supply to 960 megawatts against demand of around 645 megawatts. As a result, today Uganda produces more power than it can consume. Trouble though is that users, especially the commercial ones, feel that the increase in supply has not translated into affordable tariffs. Electricity is actually a significant proportion of our costs and it's a prohibition. It, it actually makes our products less um, competitive with those that you would import from overseas. To the manufacturers, the cost of power should be harmonized for both small and large-scale operators to drive competitiveness and support their survival on the competitive market terrain. To the electricity regulatory agency, the power tariffs are reflective of the economic realities at a given point in time in the spirit of ensuring a win-win situation between the producers of power and the consumers. And a lot of work has already happened in this area. We've been doing a lot of lobbying and pushing specifically for five cents, US dollar cents per kilowatt. Today, some of the extra large manufacturers are enjoying this tariff, specifically of peak. We are looking for having this um, lower tariff extended to all of us, whether we're small or medium sized. To the electricity regulatory agency, the power tariffs are reflective of the economic realities at a given point in time in the spirit of ensuring a win-win situation between the producers of power and the consumers. In January, we set the base tariff. Now, along the year, we adjust the tariff on a quarterly basis. And this is to cater for exchange rate, inflation, and movements in the fuel prices. All this is to ensure sustainability of the electricity supply industry, provide a reliable secure power supply. The country also projects to have 2,800 megawatts by 2024, which is about five years from now. This is anchored on the expected coming on to the grid by, among others, Karuma and Isimba. But as already experienced, increase in generation does not necessarily translate into power affordability and access. And these two aspects remain big issues to tackle for those concerned in 2019.